Yes, I'm Javaria Starks, J-A-R-V-A-R-I-O-U-S. Last name is Starks, S-T-A-R-K-S. Good afternoon, Detective Starks. Good afternoon. Detective Starks, where do you work? I'm currently employed with the City of Atlanta Police Department. And how long have you been there? I've been employed with the City of Atlanta Police Department since 2012. What is your current position with uh, APD? I'm currently a detective with the Atlanta Police Department. Back in November 2020, uh, what was your position? I was um, a detective. What are some of your responsibilities as a detective? Um, I investigate things such as um, robberies, homicides, auto thefts, inner and autos, burglaries, shoplifting. And are you post certified? I am. And have you maintained that post certification throughout your career? I have. I want to turn your attention to uh, November 24th, 2020. Now, did you respond to a call at 4275 Walton Crossing, apartment 3216? Yes, sir, I did. And is that location in Fulton County? Yes, sir. What is this location? Is it an apartment, business? What is it? It's an apartment complex. And was it a one or two bedroom apartment that you responded to? I believe it was a one bedroom, uh, one bathroom. Now, can you orient the jury on why you were called? Yes. So I responded to the location to assist with a search warrant. Um, the warrant was for a person. Um, and for ammunition, guns, and cellular devices. Now, when you responded to the call, were you alone or with, were you with a partner? Um, I was transported to the apartment complex with Sergeant Price, and we met other people there, uh, the people who actually executed the warrant and other members of my team. Do you typically travel with a partner? Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Now, you mentioned that you were there to aid in the assistance of a search warrant. Yes, sir. Okay. So when you arrived at the location, were you assigned to a specific area to search? Um, when I arrived to this um, apartment, um, I started searching um, around the bedroom and closet area of the apartment. Why did you search that area? Um, when I initially came to the apartment, I was escorted in, and they showed me stuff that was already found, so I just started that way. Yes, sir. And what did you find? In the closet, um, I found a rifle. Also located in the closet inside of a shoebox, I found a shoebox with a driver license and passport and other cards that belonged to Chandler Durham. Do you know, uh, do you know who the residence was of this apartment complex? Um, I, um, I believe it was... A female, I don't remember her name. What did you do with the items that you found? The items that I found, um, I gave it to Investigator Belknap because he was the lead investigator on the search warrant. And did you or Belknap prepare the search warrant for that residence? Investigator Belknap prepared the search warrant. Did you prepare a report in this case? No, sir, I did not. Were you wearing body camera that day? Yes, sir, I was. Permission to approach her on You may. I'm now showing you what's been pre-marked at six, three, Paul, Paul. And four, Paul, Paul. Take a look at those.
Yes, sir. Did you recognize those items? Yes, sir. And what are they? It's a rifle that I located in the closet and the ID of Chandler Durham that I located in the shoebox was with inside of the closet. Are they a fair and accurate representation of the uh, items depicted on your body cam that day? Yes, sir. Your Honor, at this time, the state moves to admit three Papa Papa and four Papa Papa. All right, those are admitted. I am now going to publish three Papa Papa. And Detective Starks, what are we, uh, tell the jury what are we, what is depicted in three Papa Papa? <laughs> Yes, sir. It's um, an ID of Chandler Durham that I located within the shoebox inside of a closet. And what else was in that shoebox? Um, a passport. Um, I believe some debit cards, credit cards of Chandler Durham. You may. Detective Starks. Um, that ID, what... What was the name on that ID? I believe it was Chandler Durham. First. And what else did you locate or find in that shoebox? It was a passport and I believe some debit cards. And did those items bear the name Chandler Durham as well? Yes. I'm now going to publish three, I'm sorry, four Papa Papa. And Detective Starks, what are we, uh, tell the jury what are we looking at? Yes, sir. We're looking at a rifle that was located inside of the apartment closet. And where was this? I know it was in the closet, but where was this one? On the shelf, I believe, inside the bedroom closet. And the items that you found, what did you do with the rifle and the box containing the uh, identification? Um, I, I notified Investigator Badnap, and he took collection of the evidence. Did you do anything else? Um, no, sir. Brief moment, Your Honor. Detective Starts, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. My name is Carrington Matthews, and I represent Mr. Marquavius Huey in these proceedings. Yes, sir. You have been a police officer with Atlanta Police Department since 2012? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, you were part of a team that conducted a search warrant. Is that right? Yes, sir. And I understand it was in no November 24th or so, 2020, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you were not the only person that was there doing the search warrant, correct? I was not the only one there. You're correct. Okay. My understanding is that you did not prepare a report, correct? You're correct. Okay. And uh, my understanding is that there were a couple items that you just testified to and you talked about that you located, correct? Yes, sir. All right. You have arrest powers, right? Yes. You have the ability to take out warrants for people when you believe that something awry has happened and a crime has been uh committed, correct? Yes. Can you look at this jury and can you tell them that you took out a warrant for a rifle found at this particular location for Mr. Marquavius Huey? I did not. You had the ability to do it, right? Yes. You did not? You're correct, sir. Okay. Let's talk about the items in the shoebox. Uh, the items that you just talked about you're not aware of any of those items that we just talked about 
being the result of any crimes that you took out a warrant for on November 24, 2020 for Mr. Mark Flavius Healy? I did not take out any warrants dealing with the apartments or contacts in, in the apartments. You had the ability to take out a warrant if you believe uh, that a crime had occurred with respect to these uh, items that were located on a shoebox, correct? Yes, sir. Now, this was November 24th or so, 2020. Um, did you take out any warrants in 2021 for these items that you just talked about? No. Did you take out a warrant or anything of that nature in 2022 for the items that you just talked about? No. And to this date, you've not taken out any warrants for any items that you found with respect to um, a rifle located at that location, correct? You're correct, sir. And the same would be for the items that you just talked about with respect to the shoebox, correct? You're correct. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about a uh, couple other things. So this would have been a November 24, 2020 search warrant, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you locate uh, a five-star gold ring at this location? No, sir. Did you locate uh, a bracelet, a gold bracelet or a necklace or anything of that nature that you collected at this location that you believe was part of any type of crime? No, sir. Let's talk about, I think in the, in the search warrant, uh, detective, you talked about, uh, a need or desire to look for cellular phone, uh, information at that location, correct? Yes. All right. <clears throat> Did you locate any cellular phone that would belong to anyone that would be the name Gary Holloman? I located the cell phone on the couch. Right. And I turned it to investigator Bell. Now, um, that's, that's as far as I went with the cell phone. I didn't try to find the owner of the cell phone. Okay. So there's one cell phone that you said you found. Uh, to your knowledge, as you sit here today and you look at this jury, you have no knowledge or information that a cell phone belonged to a Gary Holloman, correct? I found the cell phone on the couch. I don't know who it belonged to. Okay. And I turned it over to investigator Bell. Now, you have no information or evidence that any cell phone was uh, found on it belonging to a Domitia Coppage, correct? You're correct. I don't, know, I don't know who the cell phone belonged to. Okay. One second, Your Honor. Let's beg the court's indulgence. You did not locate. Strike that. Those are my questions. Thank you, Detective Starks. Yes, sir. Any other defense questions? No, no, no. Okay, any redirect? Go ahead. Detective Starks, was this your case? It was not my case. Okay, whose case was it? Investigator Bell now. For a search warrant to be valid, does it have to contain information that the evidence of the crime is likely to be found? Sustained. What does a search warrant have to contain um, in order for it to be, in order for it to contain evidence that information 
strike that. Let me ask a better question. What does a search warrant have to contain? Uh, does it have to contain information that evidence of a crime is likely to be found at the place to be searched? Again, Your Honor, that would be a leading question and also foundation. Sustained. Detective Starks, did you prepare the search warrant in this case? I did not. And uh, as a detective, did you assist Belknap in the preparation of this case? Objection asked and answered. Did you assist, I'm sorry, who? Objection to vague as well. I'll rephrase you. Okay. What additional steps did you take in the execution of the search warrant? Um, the execution of the search warrant, I searched. Um, Sir, I'm going to object. That's been asked and answered. Additional steps. I don't know about additional steps. Overruled. Oh, uh, my search and um, I advise um, investigator bail nap or my findings inside the apartment. Courts and those in trial. All right. 